Hello everyone. All good? Today we have another very new area. Global studies and environmental humanities. You all know that um, globalization is an important area. Today we call it global studies. And also eco-criticism has become environmental humanities. Guys, are you ready? I have got some interesting information for you. I will post in the telegram group, okay? The PPD. Okay, let us start now. Listen to me, guys. Global studies is a very relevant area today that relates to cultural studies. All the topics we are talking about here in this five-day course pertain to globalization and cultural studies. These are all new areas in cultural studies and it relates to globalization and ecology. The, today our topics relate to globalization and ecology. What is global studies? Do you know guys? What is global studies? It is an interdisciplinary program. Globalization has, global studies has to do with culture, economics, politics. So many areas. An interdisciplinary program providing students the opportunity to develop their knowledge of the world. And the major contemporary issues confronting humanity. Many contemporary issues relating to culture, politics, technology, everything comes within global studies. The field of global studies revolves around the impacts of globalization and the, gro and the growing interdependence of states, economics, societies, cultures and people. The interdependence of states, nation states, economies, societies, cultures and people. The development of global studies is secondary in secondary and tertiary education. Remember in the West, when people are teaching in schools and colleges, they have to take into consideration multiculturalism and globalization. Because today a student community is an international community. People from across the world will be there. Global studies is becoming very, very important in education also, therefore. In uh, the context of education, what is global studies is very important. Did you get me, guys? Bell Hooks has written about it. Pedagogy-related books. Related to globalization, multiculturalism, multiracialism. Uh, global studies is cross-disciplinary. It equips students with variety of analytic tools. There are many analytic tools in global studies. Uh, to approach current global systems creatively. Uh, it looks into how the reorganization of time and place and an increased global interconnectedness affects life. What is the change in education or econo economy in relation to in relation to um, life, livelihoods, environments, gender relations? All this is very very important. How globalization relates to livelihoods, environments, gender relations. Now, global studies scholarship can involve politics. It can relate to economics, history, geography, anthropology, sociology. There are so many uh, 
disciplines that you can interrelate with global studies. Geography, anthropology, sociology, so many areas. Technology, philosophy, health. So when you st when you uh, when you do research or write a research paper, you should think of such cross disciplinary connections. Okay, then only our research will have value in the coming years. If we do a traditional kind of research, you may even lose out on jobs and promotions in the coming years. So it's very important to do a very futuristic topic. It often emphasizes a post-colonial perspective. Global studies involves a post-colonial perspective because in colonization, so much of environment and culture, etc. got destroyed. How is neo-imperialism and globalization working like a new age colonial ideology? Did you understand? The multinational corporations that rule all over the world, it is called neo-imperialism. And this is a continuation of colonization, colonialism. So post-colonial perspectives and global studies are important. They attempt to analyze global phenomena through a critical, theoretical, multicultural lens. Global phenomena are analyzed through a multicultural lens in post-colonial perspective. Criticizing perspectives of Eurocentrism. So globalization, how does it promote Eurocentrism? How does it pro promote neo-imperialism? How does it promote neo-orientalism? Are you getting me, guys? Is it helping you guys? Please pay attention because after, without listening to all this, if you think about what will I do for research, give somebody give me a topic, that is not the way you should do research. Pay complete attention and uh, read extra. This is more important. This five-day course is more important than net practice and all that I do. Uh... Health studies based on pandemic can also be done. I Please watch my video on medical humanities also. Medical humanities, first day I did. Na? There uh, I have talked about uh, concepts and theories uh, in medical humanities, which can be applied to pandemic. The Global Studies Journal is there. The Global Studies Journal founded in 2008, devoted to mapping interpreting new trends and patterns in globalization please check out global studies journal okay guys new trends in globalization uh, articles on new trends in globalization are there there is global studies consortium will you check it out global studies consortium it is an international academic association of over 20 institutions of higher learning. It seeks to promote and facilitate teaching programs in global studies. I told you guys, um, you should also think of development studies in relation to global studies. Development studies and global studies also very important. You can study food culture in relation to global studies. How? Food patterns are changing. Food studies is all the more relevant only because of global studies. Before um, globalization, uh, food culture was not so relevant in academia. But because of globalization and global studies, food culture also has become relevant. Now guys, I will introduce some very, very important theories. And uh, these theories are applicable in so many different combinations in so many different ways. Have you heard of globalism? Globalism is the policy of treating the whole world um, as one area of political influence. You know, I just mentioned food culture. Uh, how, uh, how, you know, Western food has become so international because of globalism. The whole world is dominated by the same political influence. 
like imperialism was, like internationalism was. What we have today is market globalism. The market is exert, exerting a political influence over us. The global market is exerting a political influence over us. In this late capitalistic, consumeristic culture, in this neoliberal free market culture, we are bombarded with so many products internationally. And through these products, we are being inf infiltrated with political ideologies. So how is globalism affecting us in positive and negative ways? How um, it affects equality or inequality? How does it foster political structures? Such ideas are very important in the context of globalism. Did you understand? And then engage the theory is the next concept. Engaged the theory uh, is somewhat recent. It is a cross-disciplinary approach again. Sociology, anthropology, political science, history, everything is uh, used in engaged theory for changing the world. You know, there is, it is theory with an engagement in the world. Are you able to follow? Today, engaged theory is a very important area in sociology. When we talk about sociology, we talk about engaged theory in the context of social complexity. We have to change the world and we have to take into consideration the complexity of sociocultural phenomena. Traditional theory is more two-dimensional and simple. Engaged theory is the, uh, is the futuristic approach to theory. Okay? It started with Frankfurt School critical theory. That was also engaged theory, changing rather than talking about the world. Frankfurt School's critical theory was a theory that sought to change the world rather than talk about it. Today, in sociology and all approaches in humanities, in, including English literature and language studies, we talk about engaged theory. Okay, they can ask in net also. Today, literary theory has moved into the phase of engaged theory. What do you mean by that? Which of the following is the correct definition? Then there is global capitalism. Global capitalism... Uh, capitalism has a centuries long history from the 15th, the 16th century we have capitalism. Now it has become globalized. We have global markets, global capital, global producers. Uh, so it kind of brings the world together. Global capitalism uh, brings the world together. It is possible for cultural exchange and knowledge. We have tools with which we can work across the world. There are so many benefits of global capitalism, true. But it is also very true that global capitalism is oppressing us. It is denying us opportunities. It is fostering inequality. So global capitalism is a very important area that is being critiqued in cultural theory these days. Did you understand everybody? Global capitalism is uh, brought under the purview of cultural studies and it is critiqued very vehemently these days. Now, in this age of technology, we talk about techno-globalism, techno-nationalism, techno-culturalism, etc. These are very important concepts again, we should know. What is techno-globalism? Uh, it is at the core of all economic and technological change. You know that economics and technology have both dominated our contemporary world. There is a, an exponential growth in technology, in technology and culture these days. Okay? And um, when we talk about contemporary technological changes, we have to talk about um, techno-globalism. It is a social theory that aims uh, to explain globalization using science and technology. Globalization in the context of science and technology. That is what is called techno-globalism. Okay, guys. These are all concepts that are very important in research. Um, they can ask you any day in NETO also. Because, uh, uh, you know, Central University approach is what they follow in NET question paper, isn't it? Techno-globalization means um, 
technological knowledge is being generated across the world and uh, more and more innovations with technological content uh, are created across the world. This aims at um, conquering the world in a certain way. Uh, it, it, it subjugates us in a certain way. Techno-nationalism is uh, the study of how technology determines the nation and its processes. How society, culture, nation are dominated by technology. Uh, so these are all important areas. We, uh, I also found other in interesting topics like techno-territoriality. That means how technology affects our inhabiting spaces. How we inhabit spaces is controlled by technology. Uh, we talk about techno-sovereignty. How government and policy making are all related to technology. We talk about techno-citizenship. You know, uh, how citizenship is changing because of technology. They are all so important areas. You can write research papers on it and then slowly do a research project if you want. All this is related to our society, which is a post-industrial society. Yes, all these are very important aspects within cultural studies. And uh, uh, we are now living in a, an in in a, a post-industrial society. You know, before in the 19th century, we were what is called an industrial society. In the post 19th century, we were an industrial society and now we have become a post industrial society. What do you mean by that? We have changed from a manufacture based economy into a service based economy. In the industrial world, mass production of goods was the main thing. Today in post industrial society, it is not products or goods but uh, services that are important. So, based on post-industrial developments of service-based economy, there have been massive social restructuring that is happening. All of us are entering the service industry. Even a product is becoming more of a service. Even when you buy a television or refrigerator, uh, what we look forward to is the service, not the product. The product is becoming less important. So, Mass production of utility goods uh, is now changing and um, the most, uh, the, the, the topmost post-industrial societies are United States, European countries, Japan, etc. Where more than 50% of people are in service sector. Now there is something called futures studies. In Kerala University, at least for the past 30 years, we have had a futures studies department. Future studies, futurism, futures research, these are all very important concepts relating to how uh, society is changing, how technology is changing our lifestyle and future. Of course, it is related to uh, interdisciplinary approach. It is also again related to economics, uh, sociology, history, political science and so on and so forth. So uh, we are not uh, predicting the future anymore. We are not predicting the future. We are shaping desired futures. We are molding our future these days in futures studies. So future studies about how to create a future for us. It examines futures from various perspectives. Did you understand? This is also a very important area related to development studies. If you read, uh, if you are interested in cultural studies, all these are very, very important concepts. Today, literature is becoming obsolete. Lit you, you have noticed a change in uh, net and set question papers. They are asking less and less questions from literature, more and more from culture studies and uh, theory and criticism. Why are they asking more questions from theory, criticism and cultural studies? Because literature is slowly taking side, um, you know, becoming marginal and these approaches are becoming central. Did you understand? So it's very important to talk about all these things. 
Uh, you already know one of these theorists, Arjun Appadure, is a very important figure. So is Roland Robertson. The other names you might not have heard, but please uh, take a look at these names also. Read about them, read their books, write research papers. Don't be uh, old-fashioned in your uh, intellectual approaches. Be contemporary. Okay, guys, that is very important. The important books that, I, that you should know about, I have listed out. You can Google search and read some of them. Introduction to International and Global Studies. Integrated Perspectives on Global Studies. Thinking Globally. A Global Studies Reader. The Global Studies Reader. What is Global Studies Theory and Practice, etc. So many important books are there. Now, are you ready to answer some questions? Fun time begins. Which of the following is not a possible research area in global studies? Bolo guys. Globalization and the spatial politics of cities. Is it pertaining to global studies? Bolo. The impact of globalization on religion, overpopulation and the impact of the environment. Overpopulation and its impact on the environment. Food and memory. Food in memory and imagination. Which of these is not a possible research area in global studies, Bolo? Yes, Nirmal. Roland Robertson talked about glocalization. Yes. Of course, food and memory in, ima um, food in memory and imagination is not about global studies. It can be about also, but... Uh, it is not directly related. Next question. Which of the following is a possible area of research in global studies? Which of the following is a possible area of research? The state of globality in a post-COVID world. Aging and popular culture. Influence of media consumption on body image and beauty. The indigenization of Southeast Asian studies. Bolo, which of these is a possible area in global studies, possible area of research? Of course, the state of globality in post-COVID world. Somebody was asking me how to do research on post-COVID. The state of globality, how global are we in the post-COVID world? Did you understand? Are we global sitting inside our houses, not allowed to go out during lockdown? How global are we? Which of the following journals is not associated with global studies? Bolo, why you people are not answering? I'm so sad. Please answer now. Why are you not answering? Uh, Bolo, oh, you are answering. Sorry, guys. I did not get your answers. Now I am getting. Which of the following journals is not associated with global studies? Bolo. Gastronomica is about food. It is not about global studies. Hena. Journal of Globalization and Environment. Sorry, Development is there. Identities is there. New Global Studies is there. Gastronomica is about food. Which of the following works is not written by Arjuna Padure? Modernity at large. Cultural dimensions of globalization. This question can come in net. Modernity at large. Cultural dimensions of globalization. Yes. The future as cultural fact. Essays on the global condition. Yes. The social life of things. Commodities in cultural perspective. Yes. Reflections on exile is not by um, Arjun Apadre. Reflections on exile is not. All these are by Arjun Apadre. Remember, they might ask in net, okay. Who wrote the seminal work? The rise of global imaginary. Political ideologies from the French Revolution to the global war on terror. The rise of global imaginary is by Manfred B. Steger. Manfred B. Steger. Will you remember, guys? Yes. 
Now let us move on to environmental humanities. This is the new approach uh, that has been called eco criticism. We don't talk about eco criticism anymore. We talk about uh, eco criticism in the purview of cultural studies. We have environmental cultural studies, eco critical cultural studies. Have you heard of that? I will explain to you. Okay. What is environmental humanities? They go, environmental humanities is an interdisciplinary field of study that creates a solid foundation to understand and critically engage with contemporary environmental issues. It is an interdisciplinary field of study. It creates a solid foundation to do what? To understand contemporary environmental issues. It aims to help bridge traditional divides between the sciences and the humanities. It is bridging the divide between the sciences and the humanities. Okay? And between Western, Eastern and indigenous ways of relating to the natural world. Natural world and human beings. They are related in new ways. It is bridging the divide. The environmental humanities did not just emerge from the West. Environmental humanities are related to indigenous scholars, post-colonial scholars, feminist scholars. The focus is not only on geological and biological issues. The focus is not only on social, cultural, economic, political issues also. So many issues are taken up in environmental humanities they build new environmental imaginaries they build new environmental imaginaries they formulate new discursive practices they make changes in economic and political structures these are the important uh, approaches in environmental humanities are you getting me guys so what is environmental humanities about? It is about what is happening to the earth's climate. And what is happening to the earth's climate is also happening in material, social and cultural fabric of the world. In all our lives, we have similar problems. How environmental issues like climate change is related to society. Did you understand? So, environmental problems are not only the problems of earth scientists, sociologists, philosophers, politicians, all are involved uh, under environmental humanities. Food scarcity is related to environmental humanities, poverty, water and air pollution, social injustices, so many people, uh, sorry, so many approaches can be united with environmental humanities. I have left an uh, un academy. I will worked in an academy only for six months. Now we have a huge net course going on in tests only. I'll be working with my own tests only. There are 600 people do doing our net course in tests now. So I have left an academy. I was working there only for six months. Now, environmental humanities talks about food scarcity, poverty, water, Air pollution, so many different, different um, health challenges. In all our test courses, you get lifetime access to videos and PDF, okay? Many people are not giving it. We give lifetime access. We will never um, remove the videos or anything. You can use it forever. You and your children can also use it. And there are so many approaches within environmental humanities. We already talked about animal studies yesterday. Remember guys, let me tell you a few things. There is environmental cultural studies. Environmental cultural studies is again cross-disciplinary. Talking about power in relation to uh, nature, in relation to culture. Power in relation to nature and culture. How uh, our cultural behavior, attitudes, practices, knowledge, etc. are... Uh, reflected on our environment how our um, cultural attitudes practices knowledge behavior etc are related to natural resources ecosystem etc did you understand there is also eco cultural critical studies 
what do eco cultural critical studies do they look at how nature animals ecosystems are all related how they are defined how they are treated in culture are you following me everyone they look at uh, eco cultural critical studies looks at how nature human animal these are all uh, related defined how they are treated in scientific discourses etc they also look at how the relationship between the human and the non human world is culturally represented in culture how do we represent the relationship be between human beings and animals for example and uh, they also look at how you can develop counter hegemonic discourses how you can develop counter hegemonic discourses between uh, human communities and uh, uh, non human worlds they also uh, address the challenges faced by world economy environmental crisis ecological crisis uh, cultural mobility that means people moving from one place to other all this is um, related to eco critical uh, eco cultural critical studies now cultural geography is another important term cultural geography examines cultural values practices discursive and material expressions and artifacts of people cultural geography means what are cultural values and practices what are our discursive practices what are the material artifacts do you understand relating to society and culture how cultures are distributed over space how places and identities are produced in relation to environment these are all part of cultural geography deep ecology and shallow ecology have you heard of shallow ecology is not about um ecology it is about human beings but deep ecology is about nature and ecology deep ecology rejects uh, anthropocentrism shallow ecology has anthropocentrism focus is on focus is human being but in deep ecology focus is ecology did you understand deep ecology is ecocentric ecocentric shallow ecology is anthropocentric did you understand then there is eco feminism eco feminism means what it is ecological feminism hai na studying nature or ecology in relation to women you might all know it is very important uh, francois de you born coined the term um, eco feminism francois de you born coined the term so life in nature uh, relates to women's values you know natural life is happening through cooperation love mutual care you know uh, uh, aspects of women's culture that is the main focus of eco feminism how uh, we should foster interdependence between people connection between people and cultures all that comes under eco feminism then eco feminism has many different Uh, varieties there is spiritual eco feminism materialist eco feminism etc vegetarian eco feminism is there i think etc then there is eco musicology relationship between sound and music with nature nature in relation to sound and music eco musicology is there it is related to anthropology biology etc also political ecology have you heard it is an area within environmental studies political ecology means um, studying uh, ecology in terms of power relations between nature and society again uh, power relations you apply post structuralism uh, environmentalism peasant studies is there peasant studies etc here then there is uh, systems ecology now there is something uh, in sociology anthropology etc called systems theory systems studies systems theory is a very you know it relates to literature also i know that many of you may not even have heard it but it is very very important um 
systems theory means the study of systems or cohesive groups you can talk about political system economic system cultural system environmental system ecosystem it can be both man made and natural systems can be both man made and natural systems theory is a an interdisciplinary and holistic approach to ecology uh, in the uh, purview of systems theory you look at ecology as a system did you understand uh, how you look at ecosystems their organization and how it is related to so many uh, books are there if you want to know so many books are there uh, relating to culture and literature you know if you read at least one of them you will get a lot of ideas okay don't shut your eyes to all this because these are the future nobody wants pure literature studies anymore it is going out of fashion important theories are andrew pickering timothy morton carrie wolf you might have heard he is very famous anna singh bruno latour very famous carrie wolf and bruno latour very famous deborah bird rose please read okay please read up recommended readings environmental humanities rutledge companion to environmental humanities so many books cambridge companion is there please read up those also now are you ready for questions did you enjoy guys i hope i didn't bore you which of the following journals is not associated with environmental humanities you know i am giving you in this 5 day course uh, so much material Mm, that you cannot get anywhere i am giving you so much valuable material i have seen many youtube videos by other people very few points are there very few very little information they give but our videos are packed with information that is also why we have less viewers because people can't take all this information they want fun only right so you people make the most of it you people uh study with this and you you will become amazing scholars okay make the most of this opportunity tell me which of the following journals is not associated with environmental humanities capitalism nature socialism resilience nature and culture comparative migration studies which of these journals is not associated bolo it is comparative migration studies also guys is there any other youtube channel that has given thousands of questions in the form of pdf for free like this we are doing it because we want you to really benefit from it you you should pass exams you should do excellent research i am not comparing but i am saying this is valuable i am not saying other people are bad or anything that is not what i mean i am just making you realize the value of this session so please make the most of it okay guys please read extra this is not just for entertainment it is like you are attending a paid course if you pay 10000 rupees and attend a course uh, like this every day 10 pm you will get only this much like this na right so comparative migration studies is not related to environmental humanities which of the following is not a possible area of research in environmental humanities which of the following is not a possible area of research to analyze climate fiction as a literary genre an environmental critique of post apocalyptic tv shows eco critical perspectives on the writings of derek walcott war trauma and collective memory of course that is not about environmental humanities that is not about environmental humanities guys 40 people have approached us saying they passed gate tomorrow i will announce their names and congratulate them okay we, please join me tomorrow we will celebrate okay uh, 40 people have approached me us saying they passed gate because of our classes and over 100 people have passed net with jrf in the previous exam they called us and told us we are felicitating them on the 27th sunday gate people will felicitate tomorrow okay guys will you join us tomorrow yes uh, all of you who passed gate should come okay 
those who didn't pass also you will pass next time na so no problem which of the following is a possible research area in environmental humanities bolo contextualizing nature in contemporary british fiction it is a possible area isn't it narratives of resistance in dalit women no representation of autism no evaluative study of elt practices in no contextualizing nature in contemporary british fiction hena very good the anthropocene is a term that is increasingly used to define a new planetary epoch anthropocene one in which humans have become the dominant force shaping earth's bio geophysical composition who popularized the term anthropocene anthropocene is a term popularized by paul crutzen Paul Crutzen, will you remember? Then, bioregionalism is a philosophy that suggests that political, cultural, and economic systems are more sustainable and just if they are organized around naturally defined areas called bioregions. Bioregionalism suggests that political, cultural, and economic systems are more sustainable. if they are naturally organized around bio regions who coined the term bio regionalism it is allen van newkirk allen van newkirk bio regionalism will you remember guys so that has brought us to the end of this session today's session i hope you got a lot of new information and i hope you will use it guys please join me tomorrow to felicitate the gate people okay i will talk to you tomorrow about the advantages of passing gate okay guys so thank you see you tomorrow at 10 pm i hope you liked this video please share it in your groups also thank you guys bye bye will you share it in your groups guys it will be a great help thank you bye bye